Good morning, all. Uh, so it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to present my study on the surface tissue dyes. So coming on to my presentation, my topic is investigation on investigation on crack and roll and crack pattern analysis of sulfur compact in one rate exposed to standard fire exposure. Uh, about myself, I'm doing my PhD in carbon and stroke uh, technology and sciences. So. So once again. Okay. Okay. We, we so see, okay. this is yeah. This is my presentation context. Uh, there is a uh, brief introduction on on uh, concrete and uh, fire actually, and then the objectives and uh, recent uh, researches, uh, then the experimental study with the results and conclusion. Okay. So before moving into the introduction, uh, I would like to tell that we are uh, themed on cracking on cracking in concrete actually. So uh, the cracking may cause uh, in the plastic form as well as in the hardened form due to several reasons uh, such as settlement shrinkage or thermal stresses, etc. So uh, in my study, actually, I focused on uh, a condition uh, of accidental load, which causes a drastic crack development and propagation, which may cause a fatal damage to the structure as well as the human, uh, human as well. So, uh, as an introduction, I would say that uh, we are using concrete as a versatile material due to its strength properties uh, uh, attributed towards a long service life. Uh, when coming to the accidental load, uh, we have considered a fire as the extreme hazard factor, which may cause uh, severe damage to the structure as well as the human. Uh, human. Okay. So, uh, when a fire causes on a structure, uh, the surface crack generation and propagation, uh, the intensity will be very much high. So uh, 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 about our research, actually, we are trying to extend uh, the damage caused due to fire. Uh, for example, uh, if a fire is happening on a 30, uh, for a duration of 30 minutes, uh, there might be a quantifiable st uh, structural damage. Uh, so we are trying to extend the 30 minutes uh, fire damage to a longer duration so that uh, we can uh, we can uh, increase the possibility of retrofitting of the structure as well as uh, we can increase the evacuation time, which uh, may decrease the human life damage also. So coming to the objective, I would like to say we are working on uh, self-compacting concrete, which is developed with uh, two mineral administrators mainly, fly ash and uh, brown granulated plus the slag. And the main uh, thermal uh, resistant material which we are considering is uh, EPA, which is expanded perlite aggregate which is used as an internal uh, material as well as a sacrificial layer uh, above the concrete surface. So uh, that is the main objective, uh, which uh, comes uh, uh, manual inspection and observation with the aid of uh, crack inspection inspecting tools, as well as an imaging processing technique uh, based on crack detection and quantification were also adopted. Uh, and uh, the temperature effect on the crack propagation inside the microstructure of the concrete is also be analyzed using a SEM scanning electron microscopy analysis. So uh, I have uh, quoted some uh, recent researchers. Actually, I am not going through the detail, actually. Uh, several techniques has been adopted uh, in the recent past itself uh, to analyze and quantify the crack uh, propagation, crack development, as well as the propagation uh, with high accuracy. So the uh, recent literatures has been uh, focused mainly on the replet transform, replet transform method as well as the manual assessment. Manual assessment uh, has some uh, uh, difficulties in terms of the uh, mode of conduct as well. Uh, replet transform method as well as the vision based, uh, that is the FCN method, fully convolution encoder decoder network, as well as the series stereo vision based track methods as uh, these things are being focused on the software simulation based techniques. So uh, in our study also, we have compared uh, the uh, uh, manual inspection method with the, a ripple transform method, uh, which has been developed in our, in our lab itself. So for the experimental study, there are uh, differentiated into two phases. The phase one consists of the proportioning of mixes as well as the casting of test specimens. And in the phase two, the procedure of heating as well as the test uh, analysis will be carried out. So coming to the mixed proportion, uh, we have cons we have considered two uh, main mixes uh, with the fly ash as the metal mixture as well as the uh, furnace slag, uh, GGBFS as the 
mineral admixture. Then another two mi mixes, mix two and mix four, that is uh, that contains an internal uh, EPA content that is expanded perlite aggregate content. Uh, that is uh, uh, we considered it for how the perlite aggregate as a lightweight material as well as a thermal insulator, how it will behave when we add it inside the uh, uh, conduit mix, uh, whether it will resist the heat as well as it will uh, uh, give some contribution on the crack resistance as well as for that uh, we have considered the mix 2 and mix 4 uh, with expanded perlite aggregate as an internal uh, crack resistant uh, material uh, when exposed to heat. So. OPC 53 grade has been used and the uh, crushed granite stone as well as same sand uh, has been used as coarse and fine aggregate. Uh, based on the different trials, uh, mainly focused on the strength as well as the durability terms, actually we have fixed uh, the EP internal expanded uh, perlite aggregate content as 2.5 percent each. Uh, when we go more, actually it will, uh, uh, when we more uh, go more above 2.5 percent, it will uh, marginally reduce the compressive strength of the control conduit and when we go less than 2.5 uh, percent below 2, 2 percent uh, it will affect the thermal resistance properties as well so we have fixed it as 2.5 percent and the workability of the mixes has been uh, confirmed with the FMAP 2005 and the test specimens uh, test actually we have uh, conducted it as uh, test specimens actually the size was 150 mm by 63.5 mm uh, circular specimen. Actually, we have adopted circular specimen in order to reduce the stress concentration caused by the thermal stresses. And uh, the mainly the test heating procedure has been done in two different spe specimen condition. The first specimen is the unprotected specimen that has been heated after the curing period without the plastic. Actually, I have uh, in the introduction part itself, I have said that uh, we have used the expanded perlite aggregate as an internal uh, heat resistant uh, material as well as a sacrificial layer which is uh, provided above the over the surface of the conduit as a plastering layer. So the first or the control specimens are without the plastering layer and the, come, uh, <coughs> and the crack control method has been adopted and uh, it has been analyzed on the protected specimen with the cement perlite plaster. Actually, uh, the plastering has been given uh, it as a uh, motor combination of OPC with the EPA content in the ratio of 1 is to 4 ratio. So we have uh, uh, fixed the ratio also based on the trials uh, because uh, as EPA is a lightweight material with a less density, uh, if you have more going, in, if you are using more uh, EPA content, the uh, mixes will be not uh, progressive and uh, can't be used for the plastic. Okay, so now we are moving into the phase two of the experimental study that is the test methodology as well as the heating procedure. Uh, so we can uh, see the test specimen which has been undergone the heating procedure. The heating procedure has been done based on the ISO E3452. Uh, so we have adopted the 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes and 120 minutes. Uh, we have uh, restricted to 120 minutes uh, because uh, after the 120 minutes, that is two hours, with the strength degradation in the conduit uh, when exposed to heat, heat is uncontrollable and the retrofitting might be uh, not possible. So we have restricted it till uh, two hours uh, from 30 minutes. So we have used a uh, computerized uh, uh, control furnace itself. It will be controlling the rate of heating uh, automatically. So coming to the external result, in the manual case, we have used the l meter for fan manually finding out the visually largest crack. And uh, the visually largest crack has been uh, uh, averaged uh, based on the number of crack, anal uh, uh, crack analysis. So these the figure four uh, represents the uh, unheated specimen and heated specimen. Unheated specimen means we can see uh, the first uh, two specimens with the fly ash as the internal material and slag as the internal mineral atmosphere. So this is these are the unheated. These two are the unheated specimen which we can we can see there is no thermal crack as well. We have compared it with the heated specimen and the, uh, compared the uh, bit uh, that is caused due to the heat exposure. So here we can clearly see that as the temperature increases, uh, the width of the crack also increases drastically. So this has been fixed as the control specimen uh, for the comparison of the uh, crack control uh, methods. So this graph shows the uh, crack intensifying nature on the control specimen with fly ash as well as the slag. So in the graph, we can clearly understand that uh, fly ash is performing well 
and uh, when we look at the 120 minutes of heating uh, it's clearly say 0.1 mm of crack is higher on the slag specimen so uh, on the heat uh, exposing uh, nature when we are using self form batting concrete it's better to uh, adopt fly ash specimen uh, to perform better in the heat resistant conditions so uh, after uh, after analyzing the control specimens that is uh, 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 that is not protected with the cement perlite plastering. We have uh, used several conditions uh, for comparing the plaster condition and its performance under heat exposure. So the first four specimens, uh, I'm talking about the first uh, half of the column. The first four specimens actually fly ash with the external plastering only with a zero means 30 to 120 minutes. Then the next second four specimens will deal with the internal expanded perlite aggregate only with a zero to 120 minutes. Then uh, the last five specimen will uh, uh, comprises of the internal perlite as well as the external plastering method. So when we look at the width, uh, crack width, uh, average crack width propagation, uh, when we uh, look at uh, the specimens with the internal perlite, we can see in 120 minutes, it's uh, 0.27 mm as the average crack width. It reduces to 0.19 mm uh, with the specimens of and when it comes to the combination of internal perlite aggregate with the uh, external plastering, it has been reduced to 0.11%. And the same pattern has been uh, the same pattern has been uh, observed in the slack cases also, but comparably little more than the fly ash cases. Uh, the in internal perlite uh, developed mixes has uh, shown 0.33% to, uh, to the 120 minutes of heating as the average crack width has been reduced to 2.025 percentage mm for the specimens with the uh, external coating alone. And when it comes to the combination of expanded perlite aggregate with the cement perlite plaster, it has been reduced to 0.19 percentage. It clearly uh, says that the cement perlite plaster of uh, that is as a sacrificial layer, it is behaving uh, better in terms of the heat exposure. Uh, heat exposure in the sense a uh, very high temperature it is very resisting, uh, almost uh, 50 percentage higher than the specimens. So these are the pictures of the tested specimens and the uh, uh, exposed to the heat. Actually, it's uh, the cracks are uh, very much visible in the micro level observation. Uh, I'm not sure uh, the crack intensity is uh, not uh, clear or not actually, but uh, we can clearly distinguish the reference specimen, fly ash 30 minutes to 120 minutes. We can clearly see that the uh, intensifying nature of the crack propagation and the development. And when it comes to the combination of uh, fly ash with EP and CPP, uh, the cracks is very much restricted and even we can say it as uh, very minimal in the case of even two hours of heating. The same property, but a little comparatively as we has uh, noticed in the numerical values, the intensifying nature is little uh, more than uh, the fly ash for the slag pieces, uh, but the internal comparison between the fly ash uh, specimen, uh, uh, unplastered fly ash specimen with the plastered specimen uh, is clearly uh, visible that the intensifying nature of the crack is very much uh, resisting to the combination of specimens with the fly ash as well as the cement perlite plaster. Okay, these are the inferences which we uh, uh, take out from the study, uh, that is the manual analysis. Uh, notable rupture were noticed uh, between 30 minutes to 120 minutes of heating for the control specimen and uh, for the test specimens without protecting specimen CPP layer exposed to 120 minutes of heating a significant crack, wider surface crack development but in the case of protected specimen uh, the cracks resistant uh, to the expansion uh, was uh, noticed even at 120 minutes of heating pieces and uh, when we compare with the fly ash in the, uh, when we compare the behavior of mineral admixtures internally, the fly ash is little uh, better performing in case of heat exposure than the slack. And uh, a small study uh, to un uh, understand the uh, effect of heat uh, when we use the uh, sacrificial layer inside the core of the structure, we have done the SEM analysis. And here also, the distinguish actually, uh, we have noticed the fly ash is behaving little uh, better than the slag actually. So the hydration, uh, the deformed portions and the uh, voids and micro crack propagation comparison uh, clearly noticed that the sacrificial layer with the fly ash is uh, uh, restricting the crack propagation little better than the 
uh, <coughs> slack. Uh, these are the same uh, micrographs for the two hours of heating for the control specimens of lyash and slag as well as the combination of uh, EPA with the cement perlite plaster for the fly ash and furnace slag. So uh, these are the manual, uh, uh, other than the same study, the manual uh, part has been finished and this has been compared with the image processing tool. So the input data has been collected from the real time experiment itself. Uh, so we have taken the two hours of heating, which is considered as the critical uh, heat exposure and the crack, uh, crack propagating, uh, intensifying crack propagating, uh, duration of heat. So we have taken 120 minutes of heating uh, samples, sample pictures for the image IPT analysis. Uh, and the, the, the process has been done in the MATLAB 2018 for software. Two steps are there, damage detection as well as, well as the quantification. So when we compare uh, the crack density in terms of pixel ratio, uh, it is clearly uh, plotted the value for fly ash as 143.23 and 872.3 for slack. So the values clearly says that uh, when we look into the uh, previous slide, actually the values also clearly mentioned that uh, for slack, for slack, the combination of EPA with the cement perlite plaster given 0.11 mm bit, and for uh, in case of furnace slag, it was 0.19. So the distinction was clearly uh, observed in the image processing uh, analysis also. So these are the processed image as well as the raw raw image for fly ash and slag specimens. So coming to the conclusion, uh, the main objective was to investigate uh, is, well, the crack control measures which can be adopted on the ACC specimen exposed to the fire based on the analysis crack pattern. So the outcome of the study uh, clearly uh, emphasized that the combination of CPP layer with the internal filler material as the expanded perlite aggregate shows better happiness uh, in resisting the heat exposure and the crack development. So uh, we, we all also noticed that uh, the specimens uh, without protection has uh, crack, intensifying crack propagation nature, but in case of the protective specimen, it has been significantly delayed even to the two hours of heat. So uh, the manual method has been compared with the image processing tool and confirmed that uh, the ripple transform method can be adopted for the simulating the crack uh, quantifying with a high accuracy actually. So the novel method for assessing the heat induced crack and crack and roll methods can be suggested in the work for implementing the structure subject to accidental fire. So this is all about my topic actually. Thank you.